Welcome back. This is Pastor Jared again with Pastor Bill, uh, talking through a little bit of the uh, Sunday School series and some of the topics that were on there for review. Uh, we just got done talking about three motivations for evangelism and outreach, uh, to glorify and to enjoy, um, love of God and neighbor, uh, as well as to uh, display the grace of uh, Christ within our weakness, even in our failures. Um, but there's a final one that uh, you had gone over, had to do with Jesus's longest prayer. Mm -hmm. You may remember uh, that the longest prayer of Jesus is recorded in John chapter 17. He's with his disciples in the upper room, praying to the Father after that remarkable uh, exchange with the disciples following the Lord's Supper. And um, uh, in that prayer, uh, Jesus was praying uh, in anticipation of what will happen after his resurrection so he's he's praying uh about what he will the charge he will give to his disciples and in his prayer he says to the father uh, in john 17 verse 18 father as you sent me into the world so i have sent them into the world referring to his immediate uh, 12 disciples or 11 minus judas but i think he intends that to expand to all his follower, followers throughout the history of the church. And he later repeated that same um, remarkable statement uh, to the disciples uh, in the same upper room, uh, we think, when uh, after his resurrection, he rejoins them and he says that again to them at the same time that he uh, breathes upon them the Holy Spirit. It's a pretty remarkable statement that Jesus wants to send you and me into the world in the same ways that his father sent him into the world. So, yeah, that's a pretty high expectation or a weighty thing. So uh, could you flush that out a little bit more of how that's a motivation, his sending of us to be uh, just like Jesus was sent to the world? Yes, uh, I thought it was worth uh, some extended discussion time in the Sunday School class, so we made a list on the board of all the ways that Jesus was sent into the world by the Father. We came up with at least six. Uh, he was sent uh, in humiliation. Uh, uh, we're told in Philippians chapter 2 that uh, you know Jesus humbled himself. He was uh, found in the form of a man in human flesh, uh, and he laid aside all of his he heavenly prerogatives. So um, uh, we can be humble like Jesus, but that can't happen without the help of Jesus. So um, that's one motivation. Uh, being sent as Jesus was sent means asking Jesus, Lord, help me to lay aside my pride and admit to an unbeliever that I don't have all the answers when they ask me a question about God. But you know who does, right? Who does? Right, yeah, you're That's a bigger right. showing another bigger where the food's at. Exactly. Uh, secondly, Jesus was sent with a mandate to get close to the people he came to save, even get close to their sin. And of course, when you're trying to love people, they, like you, are basically unlovable. And uh, it's not easy to get close to people's sins like Jesus did. Of course, he was... He was uh, mocked by the religious authorities, speaking to the disciples, look how your master spends time with prostitutes and tax collectors. What a badge of honor it would be if somebody came up to us and said, hey, uh, I see you've been spending a lot of time at that bar. What are you doing there? And we could say, well, it's a great place to find people that are trying to drown their sorrows, and I can give them uh, a better idea of how to deal with their sorrow. And then a third thing we found was... Oh, yeah, and, and Jesus hung out with sinners. He didn't participate in their sin with them, but he he was, he was had to be near them in order to... Um, That's right. Getting close with without having it influence us. The yeah. key question there is, who's having the better influence as you spend time with unbelievers? You as a Christian or them as the unbeliever back at you. The third motivation or third way that Jesus was sent... Um, and we could model that. He was sent as a servant. Uh, Philippians 2, 6 through 8, talk about him laying aside his prerogatives. And interestingly enough, that wonderful passage about what Christ did is given 
following Philippians 2, 1 through 5, which tell us that we should think of others more than ourselves. And to do that, you have to be willing to be a servant mm -hmm. of them. Uh, a fourth way that Jesus was sent, he was sent to show people uh, the Father coming from heaven to uh, tell people uh, about who God was. Um, a fifth way that Jesus was sent, he was sent um, to show God's glory and glorify the Father, as it were, kind of bringing the glory from heaven uh, down to earth. Now, we've never been to heaven, but we get glimpses of God's glory. We get glimpses of, of Christ's glory, as the disciples did when he was transfigured. And so, like Jesus, we can uh, be uh, ambassadors from God to show people God's glory. And uh, finally, a sixth uh, way that Jesus was sent, the reason he was sent, uh, he was sent to do the Father's will, as Jesus said in John 6, 38. Uh, so the question is, how can you and I fulfill our mission to be witnesses for Christ? Well, we can get closer to Jesus and seek to know and obey his will. Those all seem like things that maybe were not there on all of them. Um, whether it's there in a motivation to love our neighbor, whether it's there in all of those ways of being like Christ. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would imagine a major element of uh, evangelism has to begin then with prayer. I would say begins with prayer, continues with prayer. Uh, when you feel like you're at your end of the rope, then, then prayer got to get relaunched. Um, it's interesting, uh, Jared and I are recording this on one of these snowy uh, uh, early February days and we're supposed to relaunch the uh, the, the prayer uh, the monthly prayer for outreach this Tuesday night and I'm wondering oh it's snowing I wonder if anybody will join me for that time of prayer you know it hasn't been easy to rally the troops at New Life to pray uh, on Thursday mornings at uh, 10 o'clock and trying to get a habit started to pray once a month for those who can't come in the morning. Uh, and I'm the first one that needs a kick in the rear sometimes to start praying for people that uh, I uh, lose hope in praying for. But Jesus said to his disciples in John uh, chapter 15, verse 5, Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. So here we are, wanting to bear fruit for the kingdom, doing outreach, praying for people to be converted. And then Jesus says, for apart from me, you can do nothing. And he goes on in verse 7 to link that promise and that warning. Apart from me, you can't do anything. He adds another promise in verse 7. If you abide in me, <clears throat> ask whatever you wish in prayer, of course, and it will be done for you. So... Here we are in a pandemic thinking this is the last period of time, the worst time to imagine anybody coming to our church wanting to find God. This is a horrible time to get to know a neighbor that I've never really connected with. But if I pray, when I pray, God's going to open some doors and the Holy Spirit's going to push me through them because I know I'm not going to have that much courage to actually go through the open door sometimes. I think some may be underestimating too how hungry people will be for, at least extroverts will be for some social contact um, starting in the spring and you know you always have neighbors that over the fence post that you can have some conversations with or might join you in the backyard or something like that and there's coming a point in which you know there's going to be I think a lot of opportunities and the question is, are we, are we ready for those? Have we prayed about them? Have we thought about that? Are we motivated for that? So it's a good time to be uh, thinking about those and believing that prayer is effective and that it does make a difference. Um, uh, if you were to ask Paul, you'd definitely say, yeah, I think the prayer of uh, Stephen was pretty effective uh, in his life. And we can have some motivation that, you know, for who we're praying for, um, they're probably not even as bad off as uh, Paul was in, in killing Christians and things like that. So if, if it can work for Paul, I think we can have some, uh, some motivation that uh, prayer is effective and that um, uh, 
uh, it, it can uh, God will answer uh, those prayers for us as well. I'm glad you added that, Jared, because uh, the Lord has put on my heart that uh, um, here at, at New Life, uh, several of us leaders should try to connect with a couple of our neighboring churches. And uh, I hope very soon, before the end of February, that uh, Mike Simmons and I will be able to meet with a, a couple of representatives from uh, uh, Chapel PCA and Fairview PCA in, in industry. And uh, I, I know some of those uh, men are thinking, boy, this is not a very good time to try to strategize about outreach. But I really am thinking we have to be planning for when things really open back up. There are going to be opportunities, and there are opportunities now. Yeah. And so this may be the perfect time. Yes, exactly yeah. right. Well, thank you for joining us uh, again, um, and we'll probably have at least one more of these as a review before we get started back uh, with the Sunday School, but until then, God bless.